We are in the midst of another global pandemic, but it's not the first time that we've had a disease running rampant through our society and creating terror throughout the world. In fact, some diseases can be traced back well before the modern calendar. Really, once you have the invention of major cities, it becomes easier and easier for sickness to spread, and we see more and more outbreaks. Outside of the Black Plague, one of the most devastating of these was the Spanish flu. Thankfully, we haven't seen something this deadly pop up for over 100 years, but what would it look like if it did? I'm your host, Chad Arena, and on today's Life's Biggest Questions, we are going to be looking into what the world might look like if the Spanish flu came back in 2020. So to kick this off, let's take a look into what the Spanish flu was. Well, it was 1918, and a strain of flu started to blast through Europe, America, and some parts of Asia. Contrary to popular belief, the flu didn't start in Spain. Thanks to modern research, it seems that the Spanish flu started at an army camp in Kansas. Most likely being a flu that was living inside birds or pigs and made the jump to human. How viruses are able to mutate and become something that can both infect animals and humans is still unknown and is quite rare. In fact, most viruses don't ever make the shift from one organism to another, but the ones that do can be extremely deadly. When the people first started noticing the effects of the flu, they thought it was just people suffering from some sort of illness that would only affect those who were fighting in the trenches during World War I. But once it started to spread, people knew that it was much more than a simple war sickness, but no one would have estimated the vast devastation that was about to be unleashed on the globe. The flu would directly attack a person's lungs, and they would die of one of two ways. Either their body would not be able to handle the initial hit of the infection, their body would be overheating, and unable to fight the disease. But if that wasn't the end for this person, then the later stages would be much worse. Since the flu was a pulmonary infection, the body's immune system would set antibodies to fight this infection. This means a flood of white blood cells would be now in your lungs, to the point where people would drown in their own pus and phlegm. People would sweat blood and cough up what looked like white mold. Some people would turn blue and die right on the medical table. One of the most horrific parts of the Spanish flu was the demographic which was most at risk. When we think of people who could die from an oncoming sickness, we always think about older people or children with weaker immune systems. But that was not the case with the Spanish flu. The vast majority of people who would succumb to this virus would be between the ages of 20 and 40. For whatever reason, younger people who were in the prime of their life were the target of this horrible killer. The spread was one of the most confusing parts. Remember this broke out in a time when people couldn't fly across the globe to a new country and go on a nice vacation. The suspicion was that it traveled through war supplies, but many countries that had no contact with the war were affected, which made people think that it could have been laying dormant in some sort of livestock or migrating bird and transported through the globe through those means. And just as fast as it came, it was gone. The Spanish flu was no longer a threat by 1921, and in terms of a deadly virus, that is rather quick. Especially in a world where you could not make a vaccine within the first 18 months of it showing up. Now this didn't mean that it was gone altogether, it just stopped killing people at a scale where it was a threat to the whole world. It's thought that the virus adapted to live in human bodies better, so we would withstand the virus and it would have a longer lifespan. The last recorded case of the Spanish flu was in 1957. The original death toll of the Spanish flu was thought to be somewhere around 30 to 50 million, which are massive numbers. Few diseases have been able to leave their mark on history like that. But with modern technology and the ability to compile old documents, it seems that the damage was much greater than we previously thought. More recent evidence suggests that the death toll was closer to 50 to 100 million. There is potentially more people that died from the Spanish flu than World War II. So now that we have a general idea of what the Spanish flu was, let's take this to the next level. Let's bring it back. Let's see this same outbreak, but during 2020. There are several different outcomes that could happen. Let's say it came back right now. At the time I'm recording this video, myself as well as millions of other people are in lockdown and all non-essential jobs are cut off. Many people are at home and we are trying to deal with this outbreak of the corona the best we can. So if the Spanish flu came back now, it would really dampen the effect that it has on the world. If it was in somewhere like Japan, the effect might be quite minor. Everyone is already in lockdown over there. The country is secluded 
excluded from the rest of the world and all non-essential flights are shut down globally. So the outbreak would be very scary all over the news and people would be in shock that we have two viruses to deal with at the same time and to boot one of them already has a track record for being able to take out a huge amount of people. But things would quickly calm as the disease would most likely be contained and the number of deaths would be quite low. If we were all inside to begin with, the virus can't get very far. This would be the best case scenario if it came back. Mind you, it would really shock the world. It would cause a massive shift into drug research. Why are so many illnesses coming back at the same time? What has changed in the world? The UN would work with several other countries to start a global research movement into predicting and analyzing the possibility of new viruses coming into the public. We would want to stop these things before they start. Maybe they would start swabbing people's mouths before they were even sick, so they could predict an outbreak. They would set up stations all over the world where you could get yourself tested to see if there was a virus in your body which was on the edge of mutation, or to see if the same virus was found in multiple people. This could prevent mass outbreaks, but that would mean willingly giving your DNA to the government, and I don't think a lot of people would want to do that. If this was something that the world's governments implemented, you would see a massive pushback, as some people would relate it to a New World Order type of movement. This would create civil unrest in the same way we see people protesting the coronavirus lockdown. But in the long run, a small outbreak of the Spanish flu might be beneficial to the world. It would cause us to care about disease prevention even more than we do now. This could stop us from having another pandemic altogether and make the world a safer, healthier place. Maybe we can make it into a futuristic society with no disease and everyone has six-pack abs. That does sound like a beautiful place. But let's shift the perspective for a moment. Let's say the Spanish flu outbreak was somewhere else that is not contained, in a place where the country is not in lockdown, but let's still put the time frame during the coronavirus outbreak. Let's say the Spanish flu hit Florida. This is a good place to pick since they just reopened beaches. It can simulate what a much more severe situation would look like. Well, it would not be pretty. The outbreak would be much faster and kill way more people, and the death toll would depend on how fast the state took it seriously. At first, they might think it was just a new version of Corona and trying to ignore it, but as people started to leak videos of them drowning in their own pus, I think the world would react. Now, how far does this get? If it starts getting past state borders, then there's a chance that the whole country could get infected. At this point, we would have America being the epicenter of two major viruses, and people might start to panic. This would lead to people trying to flee the country. Ironically, Americans might try to run into Mexico to try and save themselves from catching something deadly. The Americans in the northern states would most likely go to Canada. This would lead to a mass fleeing of the country that might lead to a total collapse of what is now the world's strongest superpower and could lead to the virus leaking into other countries. Now we would be at risk of the Spanish flu and COVID-19 spreading across the entire continent. With a fast enough reaction, Canada and Mexico could deal with the refugees and stifle the amount of people that are getting sick hopefully containing the spread and stopping it from spreading it into the southern countries on the continent and helping all the people whose lives are at risk. This would shift the world, the economy would be toast, and social gatherings would be shut down around the world for who knows how long. Everyone's life would change. Did you used to be an entertainer? Well, I think that job would be dead unless you're doing it online. Time to pick up something physical because everyone would just be working on rebuilding. It would be up to the government to try and control the collapse of society, and if they failed, we would see riots, and the military would have to move in to try and piece the little parts that are left back together to help save North America. Now there is one more option. What if the virus came back after everything was over, after COVID-19 passed and we were no longer talking about it and everyone was free to go back outside and party like they had never partied before? Well, I think this would be the worst case scenario. This would mean that the virus could easily spread all over the world. We could see a COVID-19 level outbreak, but with a sickness that is much more deadly and has a way higher death toll. This could be the closest thing we have to an extinction level event. The death toll would would be extremely high and any safety that people felt after COVID-19 would be stripped away. We might not make it out of something like that. All right, guys, well, that's what I have for you on today's life's biggest questions. Make sure you hit up the comment section and let me know what you thought of the video. Also, I would love it if you could like, comment, subscribe, and hit the little notification bell so you know when a new video has gone live. You don't want to miss a thing in these weird times because we might actually run out of stuff to watch, so we are going to keep bringing you contents to make sure that you do not run out of stuff to watch. Until next time, I've been your host, Che Arena, and I'm here to answer all your questions.